Hey Hatters, my name is Royce Newman. I am going to be a junior this year. I am a health sciences major. I am a well team program lead and I'm also an RA on campus. Welcome back Hatters. After a pretty crazy transition to online learning in the spring of this year, we are now prepared to have you back on campus with us. Stetson is and has always been committed to student and community safety and creating a positive learning environment and a living environment on campus. And as we begin to welcome community members, faculty, staff, and students back to campus, either in an academic or residential capacity, we want you to know that we are committed to your safety. We have plans in place. We have policies in place um, based on guidelines and recommendations from not only the CDC, but the Florida Department of Health and the American College Health Association. We want to stress that Stetson is here for you to support you and we are ready to have you back on campus but we also need to instill a sense of community responsibility and personal responsibility for our students, staff, and faculty. It is incredibly important that you follow these new policies that we have put in place. They are here for a reason. They are here to keep you safe. And they are here to ensure that once we come back on campus we can stay on campus following our tiered reopening plan. This plan is fluid. We may be able to go forward sooner rather than later. We may have to stay in certain tiers uh, for as long as necessary. We may even in certain situations have to go back. And this is with the health of the community in mind. We want to prevent further spread. We want to keep our community safe. We will be following this tiered reopening because our community safety is a top priority and we need to emphasize your personal responsibility and the responsibility of the community as a whole. Some of these responsibilities include following the new face covering policy. Stetson will be providing each student and faculty member and staff member with a cloth face covering. You may feel the need to supplement with additional face coverings of your own. I personally have a stock of five or six. So with the addition of the Stetson face covering, I'll have about one for each day. And then at the end of the week, laundry day, you can wash them um, in the laundry machine just like you would any other clothes depending on the material. Uh, other cloth face, face coverings you may need to um, wash in a bleach solution. There are guidelines for that on the Safer Stetson page for how you can safely do that. Guidelines on the Safer Stetson page for you to safely clean and maintain the quality of your cloth face coverings without damaging them and to keep them for further use. Another thing we want to emphasize is physical distancing. It is incredibly important as COVID-19 is a disease spread primarily from person to person contact through respiratory droplets. Not only do we need to be wearing masks in public, we also need to be physically distancing. This means staying at least six feet away from other people um, in public spaces or in trafficked areas. In addition to wearing masks, we are also emphasizing physical distancing. We want people to stay at least six feet apart from each other, which is about two arms length. Um, and that is in public spaces, in heavily trafficked areas, both indoors and outdoors. Not only do you need to wear a mask or face covering, you also need to keep physical distance. And we've moved from the term social distancing to physical distancing because we still want you to have an interaction with your friends, with your peers while on campus. It may just be in a more virtual or less than physical atmosphere because we still want to encourage students to grow and develop as community members, as friends, as students, but it is entirely possible to do so outside of that six feet bubble. Stetson's face covering policy mandates that masks and other face coverings such as face shields, clear face shields, are worn in public areas, in heavily trafficked areas, both indoors and outdoors. When you have direct contact um, with another student, faculty member, staff member, um, these heavily trafficked or public areas include the cub, the dining hall, the commons, coffee shop, um, the hat rack. These include public hallways and restrooms and classrooms and other buildings where people may be working or attending classes. 
Private spaces where you do not need to wear a mask or a face covering include your personal residence, your room, outdoor spaces that are less heavily trafficked where you can keep at least 10 feet of space between you and the next person. And obviously we can't eat through masks or face coverings. So when you are eating, as long as you are physically distanced from other people, you can take your face mask off or your face covering off while you're eating. And then as soon as you're done, pop it back on and you're ready to go. Another space where you are not required to wear a face covering or mask is the Hollis Center while you are working out. We have sign up times on our Hollis Center app where you can choose to go in and spend uh, an amount of time in the Hollis Center with a limited amount of other people. And CDC and the WHO actually recommend not wearing a face mask while doing intensive exercise, so it's no restriction to breathing. However, in normal circumstances, masks or other face coverings do not restrict your breathing. So we are encouraging students to follow that policy and wear face coverings in the places that they are required. Now let's talk about some basic hygiene. So hand hygiene is really important. I know at the beginning of the pandemic, before we went online, before we went virtual um, in March and April, we were really, really stressing hand washing. That has not stopped. You still need to wash your hands. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and running water. And if that is not available, an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 68% alcohol. Now the reason this is, is because soap molecules and the alcohol molecules at a molecular level are able to break down the viral coating, the viral capsule, and actually kill the virus. And you need to foam up those soapy suds and get your hands nice and lathered up. Make sure you're washing them thoroughly, getting every part of your hand, and rinsing well, and then drying them completely, or air drying them. In addition to hand hygiene, you should be disinfecting uh, frequently used surfaces on a daily basis. Not only does this include surfaces such as counters, doorknobs, and light switches, this also includes keyboards, laptops, and phones, as well as your desk. Transmission of the virus through fomites, or commonly touched objects, surfaces, is of a low risk. However, it's still better safe than sorry to lower that risk even further by frequently disinfecting surfaces. In addition to disinfecting surfaces, wearing a mask, physically distancing, and washing your hands, we also want to encourage students to take care of their personal health. Keeping your body healthy and your mind healthy during this time can be a great way to support a healthy immune system. And we can do this by getting enough sleep to seven to nine hours a night. Um, that is what college age students and university age students need to maintain their physical health and their mental health. So we encourage you to get at least seven to nine hours of sleep a night. We also encourage you to hydrate, especially as we come back to campus. It's still Florida summer. It's still hot as it can be. So we wanna encourage you to hydrate and carry around a reusable water bottle um, with you. I know a lot of people on campus already do that and that's great. We do wanna point out that the water fountains on campus are only going to be uh, used for refilling water bottles. They are not to be used for drinking out of. So even more so, even better a reason to carry around a water bottle with you um, so you can fill it up in those water fountains. Additionally, a healthy diet is a great way to support your immune system, getting all the vitamins and minerals that you need. A lot of those have specific immune functions in your body. And not only to help you stay healthy against COVID-19, but also against you know normal sets and plague. Everyone's coming back to campus, colds are gonna happen, it's almost flu season, and we do encourage you to get vaccinated for the flu as well in the coming months. Hey Adders, my name is Hannah Cherms. I'm a senior in the business school at Stetson University and I am a COVID-19 survivor. I wanna talk a little bit about mental health and how uncertainty, grief, and strain can cause stressful situations during this time. It is important to know that we have student uh, counseling services here on campus that are available to help you with any problems that you may have. We also encourage you to use WellConnect, which you can sign up on their website to make an appointment, which is a 24-7, all-day, all-night um, service that you can call. 
and we want to stress that it's not necessarily a hotline and you can use it to have any follow-up appointments and use the educated counselors that we have here on campus. Something to talk about is homesickness and how that could be um, part of your grief, loss, and coping. We want to let you know that it is okay to realize that you may be going through certain loss and being able to connect with any family members that you have virtually is something to maintain. For those with increasing anxiety about physical distancing, it is important to know that you can easily connect virtually with other students. Stetson is committed to providing opportunities in safer, smaller settings. Another thing that you can do is self-care. It is important to stay hydrated, eat well, get lots of sleep, and keep your body healthy, and this will also help your immune system and keep you safe. It's also important to know that other students on campus may get the common cold or other sicknesses like the flu. We want to be able to let other students know that it is okay to talk about getting tested, and going to see health services when needed. For students living on campus, Residential Living and Learning wants you to come back to Stetson prepared with a sick kit. For more information, you can check out their Instagram and see what you should provide in your kit. The Stetson community really wants to stress the amount of services that we have here on campus to help deal with any anxiety or depression that you might have during this time. Things that helped me while I went through my COVID-19 experience were doing exercises to help keep my anxiety levels down, like breathing, different breathing techniques or different distractions that could get me through the day. Talking to your friends is extremely important as they will always be there to help you during a time in need. I know that talking to my friends helped me and being able to express the emotions that I had with somebody else made me realize that I was not alone even though I went through this by myself. Stetson University's counseling promotes free counseling for all students here on campus. For more information, you can give them a call or you can find out more information online. Stetson University's RAs mirror the same support that you can get from family and friends. If you have any questions, RAs are there to talk to you and be able to provide resources for you during this time. It is important to reach out to your RA if you have any concerns throughout your time living and staying on campus and knowing that your RA is there for you throughout all of the day is very important. Hi, my name is Kathy Reinhardt. I'm nurse and coordinator at Stetson University Health Service on DeLand's campus. We're located in Griffith Hall and we are here for you. We're a doctor's office on campus partnered with Advent Health and we're here to serve all your health needs. And I wanted to let you know what those services could be. We're here to talk you through all of this COVID-19 stuff. We're here to work with you through your concerns and symptoms of COVID-19. So when you come to see us, we'll see you if you're well, we'll see you if you're ill, we'll see you if you need a physical, we'll see you if you have minor injuries, and we'll see you if you have COVID-19 concerns. So if you do, give us a call. 386-822-8150. I'm going to say that number a lot throughout this, but I want it to hit home. I want you to know how to get a hold of us. You'll talk to me or you'll talk to my admin assistant, Kat. I want to let you know too that the College of Law is soon to have telehealth on their campus. Telehealth is going to be able to help those students with those same COVID-19 concerns and questions. So when we talk about COVID-19, we need to know about the symptoms. So what are the symptoms? And I'm sure you've heard a myriad of them and they're growing. First and foremost, a fever. I'm 97.5, that's easy to check. 97.5 is normal. Anything 100.4 or over, that's a fever. If you have shortness of breath, if you have a cough, if you have chest pain, if you have fatigue, if you are um, feeling nauseous, if you have diarrhea, if you lost your sense of taste, if you've lost your sense of smell, all of these are symptoms of COVID-19. Joint pain, muscle pain, um, headaches, 
So you see, it's very difficult to say, oh, I have symptoms of the flu, or oh, I just have a sore throat, or oh, it can't possibly be. It could be COVID-19. Pay attention to those symptoms. It's really important that we monitor ourselves daily, all of us, employees, students alike. And what that means to monitor is to just get up in the morning and take stock. How am I feeling today? If you have a thermometer, and I encourage everybody to have one, if you have a thermometer, check your temp. If you have a fever, stay home. If you have any of the symptoms on the list and you're concerned, stay home. Don't go to class, don't go to work. If you have any of the symptoms and you go, oh, I really don't know if I wanna stay home, call us at Health Service, 386-822-8150. When I talk about screening, I mean, just taking that inventory of how you're feeling, and you do that every day, employee, student alike. If you're sick, don't go to class. If you're sick, don't go to work. There's soon, though, going to be a tool, an app, that will be on your uh, mobile devices that's going to assist you in doing that screening. We're working with Everbridge right now, and the tool is going to be so convenient. It will help you with the screening, remind you to do it, and it's going to give you a green screen or a red screen. Green means go. Red means you need to call Health Service, 386-822-8150. But it will be as simple as showing that green screen when you want to go into the Cub, if you're on Deland's campus, if you want to go into the coffee shop, if you're at the College of Health, you show that green screen that gives you access. Nobody's going to question. They know you have done your screening for the day. So testing. Testing is different than screening. Testing is finding out, it's a diagnostic tool, do I have COVID-19? Hmm, I think I'll go get tested. Testing, um, there's several types of testing, but the diagnostic um, and supported um, test right now is the PCR test. The PCR test is diagnostic in that it's going to let you know if you have an active virus. PCR testing is is very simple. It's If you've ever had a flu test, it's identical to that process. It's a swab that goes up into one nostril and back up into the second nostril. They take that sample, they send it to the lab, and the lab analyzes it. Analyzes it. It'll come back either positive or negative. The hang up right now with, with testing is that there's a couple out there that are rapid, but they don't have really the accuracy of the PCR. Um, and they're not, not diagnostic in the way that the PCR test is. So if you say, oh, there's antibody testing available and I can get that right now in the next 15 minutes, antibody testing will tell you if you've historically had COVID-19 or if you are currently um, shedding the virus, if you currently have um, COVID-19, but its, di its reliability is limited. There's another test called antigen testing, and antigen testing is diagnostic, and there's rapid antigen testing, with, which means, oh, I can get my results in 15 minutes. That sounds good. Um, and so as a diagnostic tool, it has its merit, but it is not as, as um, reliable as the PCR, so we really advocate that you get that PCR test. And we encourage you to get that PCR test before you arrive to campus. Um, it's a strong encouragement, it's not a mandate, but if you can get that testing done before you arrive on campus and get that testing done so that you have the results, that's the kicker. Sometimes it takes up to 14 days to get those results. So when you call to make your appointments or to inquire to the health department or your physician, can you do PCR testing for me? I want to bring those results to campus. Um, Stetson is saying that that's important. Um, so you want to make sure that those results are going to come back to you in that time frame before you arrive to campus. If it isn't going to, don't worry, you don't have to, you know, don't fret. You can come to campus without that documentation. We will find testing for you, provide testing um, locally, and make sure that that's done. But if you can get it done before you arrive, it will give you 
information, oh, it's negative, wonderful, you present that negative information at um, arrival and, and you continue on. If you get the results and it's positive, then you get to um, do what's called quarantine in the comfort of your own home. It's a lot more comfortable to do your quarantine period at home than it is here. However, and I'll talk about this later, we will make quarantine very comfortable for you here if you have to go through it here. Um, so, if um, you can't get the testing, we can help arrange for it, but it's so important that you do everything that you can to try to get that testing result to bring with you when you arrive to campus. There's going to be testing um, throughout the year. There's testing in the community now. Um, so it's important to know what our house our community looks, and that's why we continue to advocate for testing and do testing. We want to make sure that we can keep this community as safe as we can for you. So, if you're sick, well, if you've been feeling crummy in the last 14 days, or you've been in contact with somebody that you know is positive for COVID-19, if you're experiencing any of those symptoms that we've already talked about, the fever, the body ache, the cough, the, the shortness of breath, the maybe not tasting, maybe not smelling, that's a strange symptom, isn't it? And people have been reporting it to me. Um, but nausea, vomiting, any of those things, we want to have you take action. And the action we want you to take is call health service, 386-822-8150. This is a, a free consultation call. You'll probably talk to me. Um, and so you're already experiencing me here now. So you call, you talk with me, and we together make a, get, a, get an understanding, gather more information, and get an understanding of what your concern is and what we can do for you. Now, there is information available outside of health service. You can go to the coronavirus communication page um, on Stetson's website. You can go to the CDC. You can go to the Florida Department of Health. Um, these are all good sites to get information. But if you are feeling sick, call us immediately. And if it's, if it's um, after hours, you can call public safety on either DeLand or public safety on Gulfport's campuses. Um, DeLand's public safety is 386-822-7300. If it's after hours on Gulfport, and I have to look here, it's 727-343-1262. But you wanna let somebody know immediately that you're feeling symptomatic. If you're concerned about somebody else's status, if you're concerned about a classmate's status or an employee's status, a colleague's status, in any way, report it. Um, it's important that we keep this community as safe as we possibly can, and it's important that we know um, when there are concerns of COVID-19 on campus. So if you have concerns about yourself or you have concerns about a, a colleague or a classmate, you need to report it. There's a Stetson University um, COVID-19 report a concern form. That's so easy to do. That's how I get most of the reports um, currently is through the report it concern form. So if you call me and you, again, it's a free call to consult with me and you say, I was in contact with somebody positive for COVID-19. The steps I would take you through is just an interview of when that happened, where that happened, who that happened with. I will set you up with um, next steps. Um, I will set you up with um, an, an understanding with other support um, people on campus. Um, we will make sure that that concern of exposure is taken care of and next steps will vary um, in um, accordance with the interview questions you answer and how what those answers are. If you're just um, wanting testing, we can do symptomatic testing on campus um, in the clinic. Um, and so if we would make an appointment for you, you would come in, we would do the testing. Um, if you're symptomatic and we're doing the testing, you would be doing a quarantine in your room. I would explain to you what that means um, and then um, we would wait on the results of that test. If you do have to quarantine in your room, 
um, we would make sure that there's academic um, information given to your faculty and dining would be bringing you food. We would make sure that residential living and learning um, knew about this too if we um, needed to make accommodations in that way. But always know you have the support of the campus um, for you. Now, if when we when you get your testing before coming on campus and you're positive and you're going to stay home during the quarantine um, at home in the comfort there, don't worry about coming to campus. We will work you through that process. We will help you um, when you come back at a later date. We will make sure that all of your um, academic um, classes are notified that you'll be later. We will make sure that that residence hall is, is held for you. You will not lose any of those things you are planning on receiving if you have to do quarantine at home before you come to campus. And if you have any questions about that, you can always call me 386-822-8150. Um, so, Reporting is important. We've talked about that. We've talked that about how important it is to do screening. Screening is not testing. Screening is understanding how you're doing in the moment. Every day you're going to do that. Um, if you need testing, we've talked about the types of testing that are um, diagnostic and um, helpful. Um, we want to make sure that we mitigate as best as we can, testing is one layer of, of mitigating um, this virus. There's a lot of layers I'm sure you've already learned about. There's all those hygienic um, layers. We're washing our hands. We're, we're practicing physical distancing. We're coughing into our elbow. We are making sure that we are doing as much as we can do to keep us safe as well as ourselves. So if you need to report, you're calling me or you're doing the report a concern form, you're calling public safety if it's after hours, you're reporting if you have concerns about anybody else on campus because we're all in this together. Stetson's values require us to be caring and kind and supportive. We need to tenderly care for each other and tenderly care for this campus that we call home. Thanks. Hi, my name is Benicia Townsend Porter. I'm the Director of Student Development and Campus Vibrancy here at Stetson University. Today I'm going to be talking to you about new practices and policies at Stetson in regards to COVID-19. These policies and practices have been put into place to help keep our community safe and they are owned by all of the community. That means all of us. This means we are looking to our community to help us hold each other accountable. Today, I am going to be talking to you about the new practices and policies at Stetson in regards to COVID-19. These policies and practices have been put into place to help keep our community safe, and they are owned by the community. That means all of us. This means we are looking to our community to help us hold each other accountable. The more we can work together and adhere to the policies, the quicker we will be able to participate in the groupings and gatherings that we love most about Stetson. For instance, student events bursting with dialogue, friendship, learning, and fun. We at Stetson want to provide you with engaging opportunities to learn both inside and outside of the classroom. We recognize that in order for this to happen, it is going to require the entire community to work together, to hold each other accountable, and to follow the policies in place so that we can continue to work through our reintegration plan for the campus. Our hope is to provide you with a safe, inclusive, and engaging environment, both virtually and on campus. But in order to do that, we need to abide by the following policies and procedures. All of the following information can be found on the Safer Stetson website and the Code of Community Standards, the addendum for COVID-19 policies. In addition to the face coverings policy and physical distancing guidelines, there are a few policies and practices we are asking you to be familiar with. We are asking that all students get a PCR diagnostic test prior to arriving on campus. 
We recognize that all students may not have access to testing, so we will also have testing available on campus for all Stetson community members. For more information, please check out the COVID-19 testing frequently asked questions on the Safer Stetson website. All members of the Stetson community who return to campus must conduct daily symptom self-screenings. This will be done through the EverBridge app. Christina will be talking more about that next. This is different than the visitor screening used for campus visitors. Any visitor wanting to come to campus must complete and pass a visitor self-reported symptom and travel assessment screening process before they will be approved to be on campus and access any building on campus. The screening process may prevent a visitor from entering our facilities at this time, but will not hinder nor limit their ability to associate with the university. All efforts will be made to conduct the planned business remotely or reschedule the visit to a later date. For fall start, gatherings of larger than 10 Stetson community members outside of the classroom is not allowed on or off campus. In all gatherings, six feet distancing is encouraged. These actions are critical in preventing transmission. It is critical that if you believe you or someone you know has been exposed to COVID-19, has six symptoms, or COVID-19 positive and not working with Stetson Health Service, you should call Stetson Health Service or fill out our COVID report at www.stetson.edu slash report it. This information goes to a very small group who can help after hours. You can also call public safety after hours when Stetson Health Service is closed if you need immediate assistance. We also have an anonymous reported form to report policy concerns in the community related to COVID. If you believe someone is repeatedly violating the facial covering policy, plans or has engaged in events over 10 people, or is violating guest policy, you can report it online. This form is located on the reported webpage on the Stetson website. Stetson students, staff, and faculty are asked to be extremely mindful of their personal travel plans. Per the CDC, travel increases your chance of contracting and spreading COVID-19. Every time a member of our community leaves campus and returns, they bring with them new germs and exposures. Being mindful of who you have encountered in the past 14 days will help our community if by chance you become positive of COVID-19 at any point in time. Now, let's talk about a few campus specifics around housing, dining, and student organizations. For housing, no visitors or guests are currently permitted in residential facilities for any reason, for any amount of time, unless given specific approval by residential living and learning in writing. Current residential students may not have any guests or visitors in their residential space. Only a student assigned to occupy a residential space on campus is permitted to be in that specific room and or apartment. Residential living and learning has identified locations for safe quarantine and isolation for students if we find that they need them due to COVID-19. We believe limiting housing assignments to one person per room will significantly help us to prevent contagion. A friendly reminder to keep your space clean and to disinfect regularly as you can bring germs from outside with you is very important. Now let's talk dining. Returning hatters will see changes in the Lynn Dining Commons, coffee shop, and hat rack that are designed to keep everyone safe and healthy. Changes will be evident as soon as you walk into the Cub and extend throughout the dining spaces, as well as upstairs to the Stetson Room and outside around the Cub. Students will enter the Lynn Commons through the doors in the South Lobby, 
that is near the coffee shop and will exit through the doors in the north lobby near the bookstore. Both the entry and the exit will be one way only, like many other buildings on our campus. Launching late August or early September, there will be a mobile ordering system called Boost for all retail dining outlets. Einstein's, BYOB, The Coffee Shop, and Lynn Commons will allow quick and easy access to pick up your food. There will be no seating in the hat rack and the coffee shop. Seating in Lynn Commons will be reduced to ensure physical distancing between tables. Because of the limited seating, the Stetson room upstairs from the Lynn Commons will be used for dining seating throughout fall 2020. Tables will be six feet apart and diners should not move tables. An additional 150 seats will be added outside of the Cub so that small groups of people can enjoy their meals outside. Face coverings are required in all dining locations from the time you enter until you are ready to eat your food. If you are dining in Lynn Commons, once you are seated, you can remove the face covering. Put the face covering on again every time you leave the table. We also ask that you use your best judgment when dining with someone else. It is difficult to be six feet apart while seated at a table. So know who you're dining with and be reasonably sure that they are practicing healthy habits to keep themselves and you safe. Now let's talk a little bit about recreation. The Hollis Center will be open limited hours for the first few weeks of the semester. This will allow us to better manage who comes in and out of the building and keep it clean. You will be required to reserve your workout time slot on the Wellness and Recreation app. If you don't have that, you can download it for both iPhone and Android. For more information, please check out the Frequently Asked Questions for Wellness and Recreation on the Safer Stetson website. Student organizations, here are your rules of conduct. Organization members are expected to adhere to all policies listed under student rules of conduct. Organizational leadership is expected to stay updated on all Stetson University COVID-19 communication sent through Engage and the Office of Development and Campus Vibrancy. For meetings and events, the event registration form will be revised to collect additional information about in-person events and meetings to ensure safety of participants. All weekly or recurring meetings must be registered. No more than 10 people may gather in a physical space. Physical distancing or social distancing is required, which may further reduce the number of people who can be present in a space at any given time. All meeting and event limitations will be the same for off-campus events, regardless of that venue's regulations. If a meeting is approved, the student organization will be asked to submit a list of everyone who will physically participate in that event through Engage. If an organization is found responsible for violating the Code of Community Standards, sanctions can range from a warning to disciplinary action, including, but not limited to, an organizational warning, organizational probation, organizational suspension, revocation of Stetson registration as an organization, and loss of privileges. An organization found to be violating COVID policies may be given an interim suspension from campus until the community standards case is resolved. Due to the serious nature of COVID-19, safety concerns for the community and the need for physical distancing is critical. If an organization is found to be hosting unapproved events on or off campus and not following physical distancing guidelines, it is highly likely the organization will be on social suspension for the rest of the semester and possibly the full academic year. For more detailed information, please review the updated Stetson University Code of Community Standards online. We recognize that much of this information may accompany frustrations. We encourage you to talk to Stetson staff members if you have any questions 
or need clarification on this information. We are here to help you, and we want to make your fall semester enjoyable. We truly believe we are all in this together and that your actions matter in helping us prevent the spread of COVID-19. Thank you. Hey Hatters, my name is Christina Culpa and I'm the Associate Director of Wellness and Recreation over Health Promotion. I also oversee the WELL team, which is our student peer education group on campus that you're hopefully familiar with. If you're not, I highly encourage you to check them out on Instagram at the WELL team for all of the important up-to-date information regarding your health and wellness on campus. I'm here to talk to you specifically about the application or app our community will be required to use this fall. Stetson will be using an app called Everbridge to provide an additional layer to our COVID-19 response plan and to help keep us informed about the overall health of our community. This app will provide us with an opportunity to send you daily wellness checks to start your day every day. Based upon your responses to the questions, the app will let you know if you have been cleared to come to campus or enter community buildings, such as the Cub, Library, or Hollis Center. If you have not been cleared to come to campus via the app, it will provide you with the next steps to manage your health needs. Choosing to engage in high-risk behaviors, such as large gatherings of more than 10 people, alcohol and other drug use, and or partying will have direct impacts on the health of our communities. Those found violating the policies will be held accountable to the Code of Community Standards. Being on campus this fall means you are choosing to engage in a community social contract built on trust. The expectation is that all students, staff, and faculty will make health and safety a top priority in all of their actions. Every member of our community, as well as their families and loved ones, are counting on each of us to help keep each other safe as we interact on campus. Staff and faculty members are here to support you throughout this process, whether you are virtual or here on campus with us. We are all in this together, and we honestly believe our actions will have a direct impact on our success in getting back to the things that we love most about being here at Stetson. So thank you. Thank you for doing your part in this process, and go Hatters.